Hey folks, it's Teresa from Stringfield Ridge Farm. And today, I'm gonna to tell you about my herbal journey. And um, so I may have to film this in two or three uh, uh, segments uh, because uh, I have company on the way for one thing and I don't know how long I'll, I'll have to talk. And another thing, I may get a little emotional um, so I may just stop for a little bit and try it again later. Um, I have a lot of uh, information I want to talk about. And uh, <clears throat> so, <laughs> uh, so I may just stop and make this two or three um, segments in this one video. Uh, but uh, first off, I want to say that I consider myself a home herbalist and a folk herbalist. And I'll explain what those are and tell you about some other types of herbalists. Um, there's probably, um, <clears throat> who knows, 10, there may be 10 different types of herbalists. People do different things in their herbal journey and uh, you work your way up and uh, you know you may not want to go all the way up you may want to stop at home herbalist or you may just uh, want to get your um, uh, certification and be a certified herbalist but there's also you know clinical herbalist and uh, natural practitioner and uh, uh, just on a, a lots of different levels I'm only gonna talk about two of them at length, uh, maybe three. The third one I'll get into a little bit and then, um, you know, do your own research. But uh, I'm gonna say that a lot of people are home herbalists and don't even realize it. So first off, according to many herbalists that I have been listening to, and reading about and reading their books. Um, all of them, most all of them say that if you are using herbs at home to, um, to treat yourself or your family, uh, you are home herbalist. Now I'm gonna go a step further and say that a lot of people do a lot of cooking with their herbs and maybe they use a lot of different herbs in their food and make hot tea with herbs. And if you know a little bit about what you're using those for, you still are a home herbalist in my opinion. So uh, because you are treating with food and maybe tea. And uh, so if you're using herbs at home that are helping your family uh, in any way, in your food, in your hot tea, and in your medicines, and, uh, and maybe you make tinctures or soaps or salves, you are a home herbalist. Um, that's all it takes. That's it. You are a home herbalist. So I definitely am a home herbalist. Um, also, my journey starts way back when I was little. Uh, probably, I'll say about eight maybe, that I realized that my dad was using uh, medicinal plants, uh, especially wild plants, as medicine. And when I came to that first knowledge of that, um, and to be honest, uh, what we, we dug, um, he made us help. <laughs> we dug uh, ginseng, golden seal, blood root, and uh, he would take those and dry them and go sell them for money. Um, he actually sold them to an old lady uh, in a nearby town that, um, that got all that together and shipped it off to wherever. China or somewhere. So he was making really good money off of, of, of wild plants. And I'm gonna call them herbs in a way because um, they're medicinal. And uh, so a lot of, 
I, I know more about wild plants probably than I do herbs, but I'm learning more about herbs. And um, so that was kind of my first experience at all with them. And then I knew that my dad took a lot of things that were handed down to him to uh, use for different things like willow bark and uh, the blood root. He actually did use the blood root in a medicine. And he also uh, uh, got mushrooms. He also brought home, we would, and well, I've been with him. We would go and hunt mushrooms and, uh, and, and eat them. And um, so, you know, lots of different things. I'm trying to think of anything else that he got back then. But that was my first experience with that kind of thing of knowing that there were plants out there that were medicinal and edible. And uh, uh, so he also grew a few herbs. He grew a lot of mint. And uh, we, we lived on an orchard for, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember how many years um, we had moved to an orchard. And we lived there for, I don't know, five years or so. And uh, he uh, had all the, you know, orchard things, everything, every orchard thing. It was an already established orchard and he bought it. We lived there for about five years and uh, I took care of that. And there was mint growing there and uh, uh, bee balm and um, several different ones. I'm, I, I can't remember at the moment. Uh, but I'm going to say probably five uh, different herbs that were growing there that we learned to utilize. And uh, so that was kind of my further into my journey of learning those things. We lived there till I was about 15, 16. Um, then uh, I got married at a young age. I got married when I was 16. And uh, we... Um, me and my first husband, uh, we done a, a few little things, mushrooms, and uh, I had also learned from my dad about eating poke uh, early in the spring, and my first husband loved poke, so we would uh, get poke, and uh, a lot of people say you have to, uh, you know, uh, you're supposed to uh, boil it and drain it off three times uh, before you use it and eat it. <clears throat> but he didn't. I'm going to tell you right now, he didn't. We didn't need a whole lot of it this way, but he would just go get it early in the spring when it was real little and uh, chop it up and put it in uh, scrambled eggs, and he loved it that way. And then we didn't do a whole lot of that, so um, so it didn't hurt us. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, some of that we done, and uh, <clears throat> along the way, he kind of taught me about the poke plant and a little bit about that and used it. Um, he didn't use it. He talked about that uh, the uh, berries and the root were medicinal. So uh, it, it took years later before I looked into that more. Uh, we didn't utilize it, he, but he knew that knowledge. And so it was like years later that I checked more into that and found out that he was right uh, but it is very, very potent, strong, powerful um, antibiotic medicine that you don't want to play with. So uh, just like you wouldn't a pharmaceutical uh, drug that you, you know, you just don't go take pharmaceutical drugs any old way you want to. You could end up dead. So <clears throat> that being said, um, so let's see, going further on, I think... Um, uh, years later, I started growing a small little herb garden that had three, <laughs> maybe three or four uh, herbs in it that I really knew a lot about and enjoyed uh, 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 using. And of course, one of those was mint. And uh, I think I think everybody uses mint. So um, anyway. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Of course, I had mint, probably some of the same ones that we had had at the orchard. Uh, mint and bee balm and um, oregano and um, maybe lemon balm. Lemon balm, I, I remember from way back. Uh, so, uh, 
and, and I started trying to learn more about the wild plants um, than what my dad had, had taught me. I started digging more into the wild plants and what they were good for, especially edible, the edible ones. Um, <clears throat> not as much medicinal ones early on as, as edible ones. But, uh, you know, and come to find out years later, most of them that are edible are also medicinal. So, you know, there's a thought too. Uh, most of the plants that are edible in the wild are also medicinal. So the more of those you eat, the healthier you're gonna be. And you can't overeat them, most of them that are edible, you know. So, um, so then uh, I guess really when I started more of a deep dive into, I already had several herb books by then, but uh, when me and Lee um, got together, I had a small herb garden with, you know, I don't know, four or five herbs, and I had several herb books, and I was studying some of my herb books by then, and that was 27 years ago. Uh, fixed to be 28 years, wow. Um, October, um, 5th of 2024 will be 28 years. So, uh, <laughs> so that's how long I have been more studying, uh, studying more into the herbs and, uh, and the wild plants too, but into the herbs more than I had. Uh, so I'm going to show you one of my first books. This video is going to be long y'all. Um, and I'm, I apologize for that now, but, um, uh, but just hang in with me because um, I have some things to say. So hang in with me. <laughs> These are my herb books. Uh, I had just, I have just, I had herb books all over the house. I had herb books everywhere and I decided to get them all in one place. This was my bookshelf for all of my uh, Bible study and uh, Christian books. And um, I, I recently just decided I wanted all my herb books in one spot. So this is all my herb books now. Uh, on the very bottom, I don't think you can see down there, the very bottom shelf is uh, just Bibles. I have quite a few Bibles. I have my grandpa who was a Baptist preacher. I have his Bible, my dad's Bible, my mom's Bible, my Bible from when I was younger and then I got another Bible, Bible later in life. I have the family Bible and uh, a uh, couple of study Bibles that I was given through the years. Anyway, that's what's on the bottom down there that you can't see. These are my herbal books. So I'm gonna show you my very first, my very first herbal book was The, Vig the Village Herbalist. And that is by Nancy and Michael Phillips. And it's a very good book and it is really well used, even stained up. It has had spills and bites, <laughs> bites from something, I don't know, over the years and lots of uh, sticky notes in there. And it's highlighted, um, that was my first herbal book that I ever had that I learned a lot from. Okay, anyway, <laughs> uh, so, I'm to get that back in there, well, it's... So that was my first herbal book and uh, I just, I studied it thoroughly. And uh, it doesn't, it has a lot of reading in it about being an herbalist, first off, and um, more about, um, about certain herbalists back at that time that were uh, very popular herbalists like Rosemary Gladstar and uh, uh, several of those uh, people uh, that have been herbalists for many, many, many years. Um, and it had their stories. And it had um, this couple, their their uh, farm that they had and what all they'd done on it. And it didn't have as much of the uh, herbal names and what they're good for. It was more about being an herbalist and um, that kind of thing. Uh, so, um, so it was a very good book. I loved to read, so I was always reading stuff like that. I don't remember what my second herbal book was, but I can show you one that was my dad's. So 
So when I got that one, I was so tickled to get it. And I will show you that. One of them, there, there was two of them. One of them is in my backpack in my car and it's very old and fragile, but, and I put it in a baggie and put it in my backpack so that if I'm ever out there in the wild, needing to get home or needing to get somewhere, I can uh, check that book. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I'll show you the other one. This one. Okay, it's not that one. It's this one. So here's, here's one of my dad's. Herb Identifier and Handbook. And it's a very old, very old book. And um, it's fragile, <laughs> very fragile. And I was gonna tell you who it's written by. I don't have my glasses on. Ingrid Gabriel. It was written by Ingrid Gabriel. And it's a plant, just identifier. Identifier tells all about the plant. It's got uses and things too, but it's got good pictures of the mm, plants. Now, that was my dad's, and then he had another one, like I said, that I've got out there. Um, so, <clears throat> down there again. So, um, here's another one I had a little, a little early, early on. I'll say early on. I don't know how far in I was before I got this one, but it was early on. I've had this book. Uh, actually, I think I've had this book before me and Lee got together. <clears throat> Gather Ye Wild Things. This is a really good book. <clears throat> a Forager's Year. And it shows you what all you can forage in the spring, summer, uh, fall, and winter. It's got poke in it. There's dandelion. So um, that's a really good one. And I've had that forever. Susan Tyler Hitchcock. Um, so I've had that one forever. I'm not getting these in the right spot. I'm gonna, oop, I'll throw it down. I'll just throw it down and move on. <laughs> so, uh, so I have been studying, really studying, um, for 27 years, maybe plus some. Um, but uh, I didn't probably utilize a lot of it like I have the past uh, the past seven years. I really started utilizing more and knowing what to do with um, each thing. Um, so, having that back knowledge, I consider being a folk herbalist. And with a folk herbalist, that means you, um, you were raised up on it. You uh, have learned it all through the years and, um, and you don't, uh, uh, folk herbalists usually don't measure every little thing and 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 stuff like that. We uh, just kind of know what we've done and what works and uh, go by the, you know, just go by what we've been taught over the years and learned over the years. And uh, so I don't know most all of the scientific names. So that kind of gets you into certified herbalist. Uh, certified herbalist uh, study under someone, take a course and get a certification. So folks, I did get interrupted. I had company and uh, so this is the next day and I'm trying to finish this up. Kind of forgot where I left off so I kind of had to go back and play the very end of where I left off. I was talking about getting a certified, uh, being a certified herbalist. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you would need a little, you know, a little more a class or a course or something, and and you could uh, be a certified uh, herbalist, which you don't have to have to practice herbalism in the United States. 
some um, countries you do and you have to have extended uh, uh, education in that to be a certified herbalist uh, to, uh, to help others. Uh, so you don't in the United States, but I wouldn't do that unless I did have, uh, I would probably stick with family and friends, you know, uh, unless you do get a certified, uh, uh, be, become a certified herbalist. And, uh, and that takes, you know, classes or a course or whatever. Um, I have taken a few little classes. Um, a couple of years ago, I took a, um, I, it was about a 12 or 14 hour class by Amy Hamilton. Um, and that was on uh, web, I can't remember the name of it, web farm or something like that. And uh, she just done a, uh, hers was mostly culinary uh, healing with food. So uh, her class was about um, uh, making bone broth and using some herbs in the bone broth and uh, uh, she done um, burdock and stinging nettle in some bone broth and uh, some other some other foods uh, explaining how those herbs that she had used in those foods were good for you and what they do for you and uh, that kind of basic uh, uh, really basic thing uh, she did uh, tell a lot uh, about um, the herbs she used. She told a lot about. Um, and she just kind of mostly went into foods and using food for medicine, uh, which is what we all need to do is use food as our medicine. And uh, I, t I talk about that a lot because a lot of the wild edible plants um, are medicinal and so if we use them we're curing a lot of things or or helping a lot of a lot of uh, ailments that we have with the food so um, so anyway um, so and I did do um, and I'm kind of fast forwarding here um, I've done a foraging class for my Sunday school uh, some of my Sunday school that are in my uh, kind of prepper group um, I done a foraging class. They came to my house and we walked around through the uh, woods and my herb garden and I talked about uh, probably about 10, maybe 10, not even 10, 8 or 10 plants that I pointed out to them and a few herbs and uh, I had them, uh, I fixed up a soup, soup and salad with herbs and it was in bone broth. I had kind of got that idea from Amy Hamilton. I'd done a, a salad from wild plants and um, I don't remember what all I put in there. I think I had like uh, chickweed and, and um, uh, chickweed and uh, um, dandelion and um, I, I don't know, I don't remember. <laughs> I had some lettuces growing in my garden at the time. So so anyway, I made them a little salad and I made a soup with bone broth and uh, stinging nettle. And uh, I think I had some mushrooms in it that I had gotten at the time. Uh, I believe it was some um, dried saddles maybe, I can't remember. Uh, but I had several different wild plants that we went and looked at and um, uh, they enjoyed it. It was free. I done it for free. Uh, didn't charge for it. Um, some somebody had mentioned that I could charge for that, but I have never done that. Uh, I just done it for my group, you know, and uh, and everybody enjoyed it and uh, and loved the food and uh, learned a lot. And uh, they want to do it again, so we'll do it again soon. Uh, we've been talking about doing it again any time, but it's been so hot here. So I said maybe this fall, uh, maybe sometime in October, we could uh, uh, do something like that. And I would have to find some different things because that was in the spring. But uh, anyway, so after uh, certified herbalist courses that you can take and get that, um, there's a um, American Herbal Guild or American Herb Guild or something that 
uh, you can register with and be a registered herbalist. And um, <clears throat> I'm not even sure I would want to do that because <laughs> I'm a conspiracy theorist and I'm afraid that they would come in and uh, you would get in trouble for something, you know, I don't know. Um, and you can go on further from there. You can be a clinical herbalist and actually have clients that you treat like a doctor does. Um, you can go further than that and be a, a natural, naturopathy uh, practitioner. Uh, just, you know, on and on. On and on, there's so much you can do. Also, just uh, selling herbs, uh, you can, you don't have to have any kind of uh, licensing or anything to just sell herbs and uh, especially product based. So like the soaps and salves that I sell uh, on my Etsy store, I sell jewelweed soap and jewelweed salve and a few other things on my Etsy store. And uh, so that's kind of a product based herbalist uh, there because that's just a product that I make that um, I do know all about jewelweed. <laughs> I know all about jewelweed. Believe me, I know jewelweed up and down and in and out. So, um, <laughs> um, so anyway, so that's kind of a product-based uh, herbalist thing. M moving forward with my journey then, um, I have in the last seven years gotten a whole ton more books as you can see i've gotten a ton more books and i can uh, pretty i can say i have read every book at least half at least 60 percent of each book here and some of them many 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 times you know the ones that have really uh uh intrigued me and 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 uh, drawn my attention i've read way more than than once most of them are references so you go back to them when you need them you know um especially uh the green pharmacy which is one of I, that was one of my first books too the green pharmacy was one of my first books and it is my favorite this is my absolute <clears throat> favorite the Green Pharmacy by James Duke. That is probably my favorite go-to. As a matter of fact, I bought each of my five daughters one of these books a couple of years ago for Christmas. And uh, it is, this has been a much used book. Um, probably, I, I would say all of those um, yellow post-it notes in there are where I looked up something and actually used that protocol that he had in here. Um, he tells um, what herbs to use for, um, let's see, arthritis. Tells all the herbs and foods that are good for that and gives you kind of a protocol of how you should take that and uh, suggests, suggests <laughs> um, doses and things, you know. And uh, so this is, a, it's, it's, it's one of the best books out there to me, to me, in my opinion, best book out there. The Green Pharmacy by James Duke. So that was one of my first ones too. I don't remember when I got that one, but it was one of the first ones along with the Village Herbalist. Um, so uh, I also have um, the Dr. Christopher's I talked about is a reference I go back to to uh, <clears throat> check over and over of, of uh, actual um, dosages and things like that. And this is a really good book I got recently. So I'm, mo I'm jumping on ahead here. Uh, recently I got this book and it is a great book to have. This is a good reference book is Herbal Antivirals. And that is a really good one to have by Stephen Booner, I'm gonna butcher his name, but that's a really good reference book to keep on hand. So, uh, some the recent thing that I started, uh, I, I bought all her books, and uh, I'm taking, I'm cur currently taking a class by her 
um, it's it's videos. It's uh, 50, I believe 50 videos uh, by uh, Nicole, Dr. Nicole, mm. <clears throat> Dr. Nicole Apelian. And everybody has seen her, I'm sure. She was the one that was on the show alone. And uh, it's a really good book. It's got a lot of, this one does. This is The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. This is a really good one. She has four books and they're all good, but this is my favorite of them. The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. So, <clears throat> I am taking a class that she has, or a course. I don't know exactly what you call it. I guess you call it a course. And it it says she will send you a certificate for certified herbalist. But it's just, it's 50 videos, and you have to get all her books. You have to buy all her books and um, watch all these videos. And then you've got a short quiz to take, but it's like 10 questions. So I'm not saying it's the greatest um, class or course to be a certified herbalist, but that's her claim is that she will send you a certificate after you're completely done, after you've bought all four books, which I already had, and you take her 50 videos and then take her 10 questions and you will be a certified herbalist. Now, I realize that that's kind of a quick wham bam um, way to get that, but I am taking it. So whatever it's worth, you know, I'm, I am taking her course. So uh, <clears throat> another good one of hers is uh, another good one of hers is the holistic guide to wellness. And I haven't got to look at this in a whole lot. I just got it not too long ago, but it actually has protocols for illnesses. So it has the whole everything about illnesses. It's not, it doesn't, it's not about the herb, it's about the illness. So you take an illness and then she tells you, uh, okay, liver health protocol. <clears throat> and she tells you all about liver health and things that can damage the liver, and the diet you should be on if you're having liver problems, and <laughs> and then some of the herbs and foods that are good for your liver, uh, reducing your toxic load, herbs for liver health, love your gut, vitamins and supplements, reducing risks, um, sleep, getting sleep, and then the Western medical approaches for that problem also. So this is a really good book. I just haven't utilized it a whole, a whole lot yet. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, I don't know if I can get that back in there. All right, we're gonna throw that in the floor and move on. What else have I got? Several mushroom books because we love mushroom. We love hunting mushrooms and we use about eight different mushrooms and that's it. We don't use any mushrooms that have a poisonous look like just because we wanna be on the safe side, but there are tons of mushrooms that do not, you'll have to excuse the air conditioner. Uh, there are a ton of mushrooms that do not have a poisonous look alike. So that's the ones that we know and have learned and go hunt for and use. Um, <laughs> one last thing I wanna say. I know this has been a long video and I apologize. I just wanted to uh, kind of give my herbal journey and where I'm at on my herbal journey. And I want to um, um, encourage you to see where you're at on an herbal journey if you're if you're interested in interested in herbs and interested in um, edible and medicinal herbs um, or even just just edible just edible culinary herbs are usually also medicinal almost always so 
um, as you're using them and eating them, you're also benefiting your body, your health. And uh, so I encourage everyone to learn more about wild plants, foraging, and herbs. And uh, if you wanna learn more about wild foraging, check out our playlist. We have a, a really good playlist on uh, wild foraging. We have one called uh, Walk in the Woods. You know, one of the herbalists that I have been um, uh, watching, I've been watching a lot of her videos and trying to learn from her, and I did get on her mailing list, um, email emailing list for her newsletters, and have watched a lot of her, and her name is Rosalie DeForge, and um, she was saying in a video the other day, um, she said, you are the only one who knows the path it took for you to get this far. So she was discussing uh, different types of herbalists and how far along you are as an herbalist. And she said, I repeat, she said, you are the only one who knows the path it took to get you this far. So um, that's so true. Anyway, <laughs> sorry this was so long. Um, hope you stayed till the end. And uh, just, um, you know, I'm gonna continue my herbal journey and I hope that you do too. And uh, I, I may get that certified herbalist certificate yet. And I probably won't go any further than that because all I'm interested in is treating or helping myself and my family and a few close friends. So, um, so that's all I need. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and watch that foraging playlist of ours. And um, leave a comment below and tell me what you do, what kind of herbalist you are, or what you, how far along you see yourself as being, and, um, and where you wanna go with it. So um, let me know. Thank you for watching.